We have a gun violence problem in this country. It was inside this small apartment last year in West Virginia where prosecutors say Timothy John Watson operated an online store named Portable Wall Hanger. But they say it was just a front and Watson was actually selling machine gun conversion devices. They'd allow rifles to fire multiple shots with just one press of the trigger. And authorities accuse Watson of making those devices with a 3D printer. Here's the thing. Newly manufactured machine guns, well, they're illegal, and the government accuses Watson of unlawfully engaging in the business of manufacturing them. On top of that, court records allege Watson sold to people associated with the Boogaloo movement. They say they are preparing for or seek to incite a second American Civil War, according to the documents. Watson's attorney says the West Virginia man is not a violent extremist and the devices he sold were in fact to be used as wall hangers. Watson pleaded guilty to a gun charge, but his lawyer says he still can't talk to us because he's awaiting sentencing. At that hearing in October, the feds plan to ask for a higher sentence because of the manufacturing allegations. The ATF tells me this case is believed to be one of the first federal prosecutions and forfeitures of 3D printed firearms and accessories. Once those uh, 3D printed firearms are, manu are made, um, they're firearms. Charlie Patterson is a new special agent in charge of the Washington Field Division for the ATF. Those firearms are being recovered uh, as we speak and are being used in violent crimes in cities. Federal law says people who build their own firearms may use 3D printing as long as the firearm has some kind of material like metal making it detectable. In order to sell them, you have to have a federal firearms license. And it's not just the feds seeing these 3D printed weapons. The D.C. Department of Forensic Sciences sent us this photo of a 3D printed gun frame police confiscated. The attorneys general in D.C., Maryland and Virginia are all trying to find a way to keep these guns and the parts to make them off our streets. These are extremely dangerous and are a real threat to public safety. It doesn't take a lot of data for people to understand how easily this could become uh, a, a significant problem that if someone who is not lawfully able to purchase a gun can get these blueprints and make their own, it's a way to do a complete end run around the laws that we have. Even the ATF says they only become aware of a 3D printed firearm used in a crime if state or local law enforcement let them know about it and police are not required to do that. So we have the ability to also um, track the trends as long as they're um, inputting that data into our tracing center in the way that they So need that's to. the key, right? That is the key. Back in West Virginia, as part of his plea, Timothy Watson will forfeit 3D printed items, the 3D printers, parts and supplies. He faces up to 10 years in prison. We live here as well. You know, we have family members that that live here and it is a great concern to us. In the meantime, we're seeing proposals and legislation on 3D printed guns and other guns without serial numbers pop up in local and state jurisdictions. You can check out what lawmakers are discussing on the WUSA 9 app and website.